say no. That is amazing. Only 6% of people, when we asked you, said no to this question. What's the question? Keep watching. We've got a terrific lineup of panellists for you and they're all busting the door down trying to get in, but I have to finish this opener. And when we do finish this opener, they'll be looking at these issues. Some things should not be shared between a parent and a child. And what happens when you do happen to share it in one of those awkward moments? Ugh, all hell breaks loose. Then we're talking about retail. How no one wants to work full time in retail anymore. Three hours here, three days here. But you can't get anybody much further than that. And the final issue. Does anyone remember when girls matured quicker than boys? Now we have social media. So what's that done to the mix? All these issues, fantastic panellists coming up right now. Sweet and sour. Cheers. Got a problem, big or small, would a miracle be nice? Our monthly crew is back, churning out advice. You might even laugh a bit in the following half hour. Park your backside on the couch, cause baby it's time for Sweet and Sour. Right here on Sweet and Sour. It's time for sweet and sour. It's time for sweet and sour. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Sweet and Sour. Lovely to have your company. Gary Mitchell with you for the next chat-filled half hour. Who's on tonight addressing your issues? First up, my mate, Kane Boyatzis is here. Hello, sir. Howdy, howdy. Long time between drinks, sir. <laughs> it's been a long time. Yeah, and how's uh, the world of... Uh, Psycho uh, analysts <laughs> yeah. and all that. It's sort going of... well. It's going well. Yeah, it's it's, right. it's great. It's rewarding. It's I like rewarding. It. I love it. Yeah. Well, you feel like you've helped a few people. With over That's life. the hope. Yeah. That's yeah. the hope. It's, it's... Or just damage them so they come back for repeat business. <laughs> I'm not sure how that <laughs> works. But, do you yeah. ever think, nah, hopeless case? Um, yeah. If I'm honest, sure. Oh, but, really? But there's always a difficult day in everyone's work, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah. I mean, yeah. There's a thing called unconditional positive regard. So we just got to hold the hold the fort. Trust right. that people can do the work. Yeah. yeah. Welcome, mate. Long time um, no see. Thank you. So good to have you back. Long time no see also for Jade. Hello. I'm back. You're back. Surprisingly, you... they wanted me back. What do you mean Hello? surprisingly? We got a lot of emails saying, you know that. How's your mum? She's good. She's over she... there. She was the one making all the racket at the I... start today. I heard. Everyone's deaf now. <laughs> oh, there, there we go again. Yeah, that's, She's that's here. <laughs> Michelle. Um, you'll remember Michelle because we're going to have Michelle on in a few weeks' time yeah. as well. She was on, what was it, Big Brother? Yeah. Big Brother. <laughs> Many years ago. Many years ago. We'll get us both nice on to here. Have you here. Yes. We will. We'll get the two Yeah, that'll on. be interesting. How are you in Perth for Lydia for, on this occasion? Just, uh, just fleeting in and just to see your kids and then fleeting much. out. That's right. <laughs> Some people living have all the, the luck. <laughs> living the tough life. Oh my gosh. How many but I've people, created it. I've created how it. How many people do you have in, on Instagram at the moment? Almost 30,000. I'm a little bit shy of 30. So follow I Lydia Love. Wow. Am I allowed to do that? Yeah. I Lydia Love. Lydia with an I. I, I Lydia Love. Why, why didn't you put I Love Lydia? Is that because there are so many I Love Lydias? Well, or because you wanted to be loves different. Lydia, and, and I just didn't want to say obviously. Smarter. So I Lydia Love. Dot dot dot. Fashion, lifestyle, travel, all the wonderful things I get sponsored for. Open to many more. God, you do a lot. Anyone watching? <laughs> Jono, what do you get sponsored for, mate? I don't get sponsored for anything. I have to sponsor other people to listen to me, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> where's, the, where's the fairness in that? Uh, now, I saw you hobbling along the terrace the other day. That is because? An old football injury combined with arthritis. Oh. Yeah. And so you had to have the leg amputated at what no, point? No, no. They <laughs> took out a ganglion, bone spurs and some bone chips. Oh. Yeah. And that was from the left cheek. What about <laughs> your leg? <laughs> no, the leg's still going. Just. Oh, <laughs> mate, all right. I hobbled to sweet and sour tonight anyway. Oh, well, it's not that, <laughs> not that far a walk, <laughs> is it, really? I made it. All right, I'm glad you did. We would have sent Travis over to pick <laughs> you, piggyback you if you didn't make it. Here we go. You ready to do some work? Hi, sweet and sour. You know, some things should not be shared between parents and their children. Mum and Dad split up for a while. It was just a separation because Dad wanted to stray a bit and mum wouldn't have it. She made ma uh, dad move out and, she, and he sowed his newfound wild oats. The novelty wore out quickly. Dad now wants to come home. Mum has agreed, but only on the condition that dad goes for an STI test um, first before they share a bed. And if he's got anything from someone else, all bets are off and so is the marriage. Uh, this is where it gets tricky for me. When it all first blew up and Mum threw Dad out, 
In a moment of anger, she confided in me that she felt completely justified for having had several affairs the previous year. I've kept my mouth shut while mum's been a complete hypocrite. In the back of my mind, I'm thinking that if my dad does have any sexually transmitted diseases, it may have been my mum who gave it to him. So do I tell my dad? Do I insist my mum gets checked too? I just never wanted to be in such an insidious position. This is torture for me, writes Gaylene of Safety Bay, WA. We did change your name, Gaylene. Don't worry, they don't know about you. Straight up to Lydia. What do you do here? Well, firstly, I do like how she opened the letter saying that some things should not be shared between children. They don't need to know everything. Um, so I hope this girl or you are not too damaged by knowing just yeah. what your parents have done because we all want that perfect sort of scenario. Obviously, you don't have it. Um, and you are privy to both sets of information. And with that, I think it's pretty much all out on the table, except the dad is kept out of the dark. So, yes, mm. both should be getting the tests done. And Dad's both in the dark. Dad's, Dad's in the dark. Dad's in the dark. Does, uh, Jono, does Dad need to be brought in? Does Dad need to be told what's going on? Does the well, playing field need to be... I was going to say the child needs to basically prick the pimple <laughs> um, and, and spill all. See what you get. <laughs> and spill all because... It's going to be a very pussy affair, isn't it? <laughs> both of them have, to use a bit of a euphemism, been doing a lot of miles in their car and they now need to get checked or serviced. And uh, the results of that should be made available to both parties. And the kids <laughs> now as well. Yeah, and the kids as well. Oh. Well, the kids don't need to know the results, but mum and dad need to be hang told on, on. Hang on, If yeah. you're a kid in this situation, now... If you're not told the results, you're, you're going to be sitting there going, why haven't they told us? Well, we, we're aware of this. As Lydia said, mum and dad probably shouldn't have confided in them in the first place. You Absolutely. Don't, you don't tell your kid what you're doing uh, after 8pm at night between the sheets. It was, it was a fit of pique, I understand. The mum, well, uh, yeah, it was the mum who just let it off that she was having affairs yeah, well, the she year should, before. She should have kept that to herself. Oh. But now that she's spilt the beans, they both need to go and get a check. Yeah. Oh, Kane. Yeah. Well, they haven't completely been spilled. So. <laughs> well, I mean, I think <laughs> reading this, you know, our first reaction, I think, well, I don't know if I'm speaking for myself here, is to do a bit of a go Jerry, go Jerry kind of <laughs> thing. Because it, it feels sensational, right? But the truth of it is, I mean, stuff like this happens so often, it's not sensational at all. Mm. And I've got a different take on this. Like in work that I do with families, um, we often take what's called a, a, a systemic lens or a systems theory, which is that a family is one whole enmeshed, tangled emotional unit and things that affect one person spills onto everyone else. And so... That's certainly the case here. Yeah. Some issues can't Spilled be resolved. Spilled onto a few more people as well. Yeah, but... Yeah. Oh, jeez, too much information there. But, um... <laughs> but, yeah, I think um, the, the bit that I, I... Actually, I could give some advice, which would be there's a brilliant psychotherapist by the name of Esther Perel, and she's been doing some great stuff. She's got a brilliant TED Talk on modern infidelity. And so it's great because it unpacks sort of why these things happen and why relationships can either, either rebuild from them or fail. And But the, the other thing I don't Tell like me, about this, Tell me, is this a rebuild or is this a fail? That's yet to be determined. I think honesty... Depending and, on the results. Yeah, yeah. The one bit I don't like is, you know, Galen, you're, you're in a position where it's... You're sort of emotionally blackmailed or paralysed to sort of, you know, do anything and you might take some blame about this as well. I think let your mum know, pick a date, say by this date I'm going to tell dad if you haven't told her, give her the chance to kind of do that. If that hasn't been done, follow it up and yeah, come prick, on, Jade. prick the pimple was it? The last there. last yeah. word, are we pricking the pimple with you oh, as well? Okay, so I reckon she should be getting a test anyway just because she has not been living under the same roof as him so he doesn't necessarily know what she's been doing either. Mm. So if I was the kid I'm a very open and honest person. Again, said it before, I've said it, I'll say it again. Honesty is the best, so I'd go straight to the mum. Always, always. That's why I don't have many friends. I'm too honest. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to be honest. So I would say to her, look, I'm not going to tell dad what you said, but, you're but going to I'm get giving a test you the option well. to say, look, just to ease your mind, I'll go get a test as well. And if she doesn't, oh, I'd tell the dad. Ooh. Tell the dad. Spill the beans. Mm -hmm. When we yes. come back, we're going to be changing the topic. And, oh, but no, I've, I've, I've been told I've forgotten about your say, because we asked you at home, should a parent ever confide in their children 
the private issues regarding the other parent. We asked you, and this is what you said. Here we go, on the screen right now. 38% of you said, yes, you should tell your kids. 62%, the overwhelming majority, before we go to an ad, said, no, you don't tell your kids anything. Mm. Depends what it is. I wouldn't be telling them about the affairs that we're all having on the side. What does that do? When we come back, retail and why it's crashing and why nobody wants to work full time. Don't go away. Sweet and sour. Time for Sweet and Sour. Right here on Sweet and Sour. It's time for Sweet and Sour. Oh! <laughs> it's time for Sweet and Sour. Welcome back to Sweet and Sour. If you'd like to send us a letter, send it to one of these social media contact points that's about to appear on your screen right now. There it is. It will land here if you actually do send it through one of those points. And for every letter issue that you send us and we read out, we're going to send you to the movies courtesy of Natalie Cameron and NRC Communications. And we're sending you this week to Palace Cinemas. And there's a beautiful emporium that's just opened up in Perth. It is sensational. Hope you all get along to that. Letter two, here we go. Mitch, I'm writing and talking to everyone for help. I can't find a full-time retail shop manager. I have four shops in this, in this economy where retail is struggling to survive. And no one, I repeat, no one wants to work full-time as a retail manager. I've got plenty of applicants who want to work three days a week, plenty even who just want three hours a day, but not a single suitable person who wants to work a full-time 38-hour job. This is what the casualisation of the workforce has done. At first, it was a bonus for big and small business to save employment costs. Now the workforce is so used to non-permanent positions, no one wants one in retail. It's bloody awful. Now, what are we going to do, panellists? And what else is it that's changing that we haven't banked on? If I can't find a manager, I'll be forced to close one of the stores and then maybe all. I didn't hear a single word about this in any of the election speeches, nor did I hear anything to help small business. The casualisation of the workforce was a push by big business and now small business is paying for it. Barry of Armadale in Victoria. Jono, first up to you, sir. Did you notice the casualisation of uh, the workforce happening? Most definitely, but I think nobody wants a job in retail full time because most of the jobs are so incredibly boring. That's yeah. the first point. Yeah. The you second, have to be on your feet all that time, it's tiring. The second point is there's no such thing as a real full-time job at retail. We heard about two weeks ago that McDonald's in the US are going to privatise every cashier's job across the United States. What does that mean? So you'll just key in your orders when you go to the counter. So there will be no more of those oh, full-time positions yeah. left. It'll so be totally like, automated. It's, going, it. yeah. it's like going to They're the petrol station. It. Yeah, that's right. It's like going, yeah, exactly. So we're going to get rid of people. We're going to get, we're going rid, to get of people. rid of more people. And the third point I'll make, Mr. Mitchell, is this: um, that in the retail shops that I go into in the city, particularly men's clothing, mm. most of the people working on the floors say that guys only come in to get measured, and then they order it online. Yeah, that's mm. happening quite a bit. Lydia. Well, let me tell you something. That tell doesn't me. just happen with men. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Women also go into retail stores, try clothing on and then order it online. And why wouldn't you if it's cheaper? You feel sorry for the retailer. However, at the end of the day, we all do want to save our bottom dollar. Uh, in Sooner or later, though, we won't be able to go to the shops because if demand for shopping in shops isn't there, we're all going to have to go to the... I do, I, I do that anyway, so I'm sort of used to it. Yeah, it what, is nice what, what because it's a shop, though. What proportion of shopping would you do online and what would you Probably do? Probably 70. 70 percent online? Groceries say. included? No, no. No, OK. Because I get most of that sponsored. Well, all my nieces and nephews, <laughs> no. they, they buy their groceries online now, too. You know, well, I live in an apartment. I just find it tricky to kind of... Yeah, coordinate. Coordinate I get it. That. Uh, I do just want to say, though, uh, as a former business owner, um, you just got to look, while this is all going on, you have to try to find a solution and look at the positive. If you can't find a full-timer, split the role. There's always a solution, and I just want to say, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't split give the up. Role. Never Jay. give up, unless you want to. 
Okay, so she says here that she's got four shops. So she could work in the busiest one herself. There's one manager. Barry, she's Barry. Yeah. Barry. Oh, Barry. Barry. I'm sorry, Barry. Let's not Great assume. name for a girl. Let's he? not assume gender. I know. I yeah, sorry, I'm terrible. Barry, I am. Um, Barry. Okay, so one, he could work in one of them. Two. How do you know he doesn't? Well, well, he might. He probably needs to So he's got. Let's say he's got three to do. That's not hard. There's lots of people in the world. So three people. Obviously, they're not getting paid enough. Obviously, they're not happy not, with their job. Not being paid enough. Why doesn't he Certainly not give them a pay rise? The pay them more than the award rage. Mm, what wage? Are you, are you allowed to do that? I don't know. That's what but, every retailer has to juggle, isn't it? You know, the well, amount you pay against the other expenses and the revenues that come in. It's not yep. that simple. No, it's not. It's not that simple. Kane, come on in, sir, yeah. last word. Yeah, I'm not so sure about this one. I don't want to be offensive or anything like that, but, um, you know, it was my understanding that, like, retail's in, like, being a, a, a um, you know, um, on the ground level is a very casual dominated job. But being a retail manager statistically is usually quite a full-time position and so it does surprise me. It makes me wonder what it is about this business. Got to manage business. the stock, got to yeah. manage the staff, got to manage the, the clients, yep. got to make everything. It's a, it's a bigger skill set, mm. you know. Yeah, um, tough gig. But yeah, I mean, I suppose it, all I could say is this might seem like a big um, risk to the business and there might be a lot of adversity to, to, to this sort of situation. But try to be curious about it. Like, what, what about these applicants? You know, why didn't they want... The, the, the full time position, or what was it that they were looking for? See if there's a positive to And be can seen. you update the business model around that? Yeah. All right, we yeah, asked you at home sense. to answer this question for us. Has big business caused the casualisation of the workforce at the expense of both the workers and small business? And this is what you said on your screen right now 94% said yes. Big business has caused the casualisation of the workforce. When we come back, <laughs> we're going to be talking about whether women mature far quicker than men in this social media age. When we come back, more discussion with Sweet South. See you then. Do that. It's time for Sweet and Sour. Right here on Sweet and Sour. It's time for Sweet and Sour. Welcome back to Sweet and Sour. Last letter of the evening. Dear Sweet and Sour. Here we go. Does anyone remember when girls matured much earlier than boys? It was a standard rule of thumb and I remember teachers at school saying as much to all the girls. My mum and dad echoed as much and I saw it with my girlfriends and the comparisons with our siblings. I fear social media has changed all of that. My two daughters are horribly attached to their Instagram and Snapchat accounts and the concocted, almost fake images that beg for likes from others that they and their friends are so very attached to. My two boys, who are in their teens as well, but younger, don't have the same affinity with social media, and in my view, and that of my friends who are mums of similarly aged kids, the boys are far more responsible now. And it's all because of the grip and preoccupations that these smartphone apps have over our girls. Can the panellists please explain what it is that has our girls captive and why it's holding them back from maturing? I simply don't understand why this is happening and what it is that mums can now be doing to stop this decline. Fiona of North Adelaide in South Australia came. First up to you, sir. Yeah, well... Do you see this happening? It does happen, yeah, mm. absolutely. Um, and there are different, like, I mean, I don't want to stereotype here, but... but you know, there are different usages of social media, boys compared to girls, that's for sure. It seems to be something that girls use social media more than boys, and that disparity grows between the ages of 10 and 15. So it's like, you know, a lot different. Um, boys use, um, like, online gaming and stuff, but what's interesting yeah. about that is they seem to use that as a means to converse with their friends in the same room, pref preferably. Boys do this. So it's a vessel of communication. Wow. Yeah, that's how they prefer to do it statistically, whereas girls are much more isolated with their use of social media. Girls seem to be more interested in the relational aspect of social media, so, you know, um, cultivating and maintaining friendships, whereas boys are not as interested in that. They're more inter interested in entertainment use of social media. So, yeah, it's an interesting thing, but 
um, we're so quick to jump on and demonise new technology. I don't think we can establish a causal link, like using social media Not causes yet. this. Far too early, isn't it? Some researchers flipped that and is worried that girls are more likely to have anxiety from a younger age and their use of social media might be a, a means of sort of, um, you know, limiting the, you know, social costs of their anxiety, maybe? Okay. Interesting. All right, we'll Good go thought. to Jade. Jade, what do you reckon about this one? Sorry, what? Uh-huh. Case in point, wasn't oh, it? <laughs> sorry, I was just checking my Instagram. Let me confiscate there. Um, <laughs> no. Sir, can you open that? Um, You'll be no, prosecuted. Seriously, it is, it, is, it is a problem and I'm... Oh, you want my attention now? Oh, I do. I oh, know, I'm here. It's a problem. It's okay, okay. I'm back. Um, no, social media is a problem, but it's also not a problem. So. It's kind of, it's a tough one because like for example, I use it and I love it and I go on Instagram. I check it a lot, like not all day every day, but I mean a lot of hours I check it. Every day a lot of hours. Yeah, it's bad. And I, act like, I actually like, I'm addicted and it's so bad you don't even realise. And I've actually deleted the app off my phone once to like have a little break and have Very a little easy detox. To get it back, though, isn't and I just pick up yeah. my phone and I'm like, go and open my phone for absolutely no reason and go to find it and it's not there. I'm like, I didn't even think I was doing that. Mm -hmm. So I it's don't like know. It's like having weird. a fight with your sister, you know, after one or two days you go, oh, I better ring her. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it's it's also, um, I don't know why they're saying girls, you know, because it's stopping everyone from maturing, I think, because when you mature, you learn to oh. communicate with people. And I think that a lot of people are just on their phones nowadays, they're too scared. Like, have you ever tried buying something off Gumtree? And you call them no. and there's no answer, you send a text and you get a text right away. Wow. And, and then you're like, call back and then they don't answer. And they're like, please text. And no one wants to talk anymore. Well, that's the anxiety And I thing, reckon right? that that's, that's the, the social issue. media age. That's, yeah. that's what it's all about. We asked you at home to answer this question for us. Does social media have the negative effect of stunting the maturity of girls more so than boys? Interesting. Because here's what you said. Flashed up on the screen there. 58%, almost 60% said yes. And 42% said no. Interesting. Lydia? Well, I'm in the... Now, now, you're the social media queen here. Mm. So... I'm in the 42 How old are your girls? They are six, five and six, turning six and seven soon. This okay. is touchy way. Okay, all right. And because it's not really impacting them yet, is it? A little bit. They are... They're just starting now, are they? They understand, and I've tried to keep them out of it as much as they appear and are featured on my social media. Um, I still try and keep them out of it a little bit. But lately, that's why I was wondering why you mm. mentioned that, lately there have been conversations and they're referring to Instagram and how many likes. And as soon as I said, how many, mummy, how many likes did they get? I just thought, oh, I don't really want them to know that yet. But talking about yeah, likes. Yeah, they're going to get hooked. I, well, I'm hoping not. But it is the way of the world. I just do want to say, though, talking about likes, Instagram just the other day announced that they are removing the like view from every single photo. Wow. They're rolling it out yeah. in Canada. And followers. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, and followers. And followers. I didn't hear that. John I just o, heard like. Yeah, we'll so bring you in for, cool. the, for the last word on this. Last word on this to a male. Um, <laughs> I think social media has got a lot to answer for. I think it's going to make young girls fatter um, because they're going to sit <laughs> at home all day on their social media seeing who's wearing what, who's looking the best and who's having the best fun. Whereas they should be out doing things, yeah. such as playing tennis, <laughs> swimming, being yeah. in a park. My yeah. um, is, it making, yeah. is it making boys fatter? I at, think it is. Well, it I is in it Japan. Is, yeah. And I saw a documentary on SBS the other day about you know all these boys locking themselves in their room and they they do their business on the on the internet. Gary, and, I'm, I'm and convinced, they get their food in. I'm convinced it makes people very unhappy when they spend too much time. Yeah. on Yeah, agree. Yeah. It was like no it physical yeah. activity. Balance. Yeah. So balance. In yeah. balance. Bob, so we've got you there. We've got to go. The music's been playing and we are scheduled to say good night. So, Hi. Kane, thank you for being here, sir. Thank you, everyone. Nice to see you, Cheers. sir. Jade, good to have you here. Oh, Thanks gorgeous. for having me back. Where are you going? Croatia. <laughs> Croatia, where else? All right, well, when you get back, come and see us. Yes, I will. John, can you hobble across the road for us again in uh, some future weeks? I was going to ask for a chairlift, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's terrific.
Thank all of our wonderful panellists for being with us tonight. Thank our terrific crew here at Central and thanks for having us at home tonight, Australia. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye. See, what a good lot of guests. You don't even have to ask them to wave.